you'll be able to measure the area of a room and put it into a table that automatically adjusts not only in the floor plan, but inside of the table itself as well. Now to measure the area of a room, the easiest way to do this, I find, is typically to go to the fill tool. We'll click into the open space. We'll drag our mouse. We'll tap tab so that we can enter the dimension. And then for this one, I'm going to type in 1000 by 1000 and I'll hit enter. Now if I hit escape twice, just to deselect the tool, then if I select the fill up in the top, if I scroll across to this section just here, I can go show area text. And we can see that it accurately shows what the area is inside of that fill. If we grab the edge of it and go to the pet palette and go to offset edge, and then we'll give this say another 500 millimeters and hit enter, we can see that it automatically updates that area as well. Fills I find are the easiest way, but the next step up from that are zones. So if we delete this film, now if we go over to the toolbar and click on the zone tool, it's going to be pretty much the exact same thing. If we click into our open space, drag our mouse and we go 1000 by 1000 and hit enter. We'll have a little hammer pop up if we click this in the middle. We might notice that nothing's happened. There are just a few things we'll need to check and adjust so that we can use the zone tool. Number one, we'll want to go up to documentation and we'll make sure that in graphic overrides, we have no graphic overrides shown. Next thing, we'll want to go to document and this time we'll go to model view and we'll go to model view options. And we'll make sure that we've got zone stamps turned on. For some reason, pretty much all of the model views have this turned off, but we'll want to make sure it's turned on and then we go OK. And then we can see the area inside of the zone as well as the zone name, which is going to come in really handy when we start actually labeling our different rooms. Now, the third thing, if we go into our 3D, if we hit F3, we'll notice that we can't actually see our zone right now. So all we need to do is hold in control, alt, then press A. This is going to bring up filter and cut in 3D. If we scroll down, we'll turn on zone and we'll go OK. And this will let us see our zone in our 3D view. Now, if you can't find the shortcut, just go to view and then go down to elements in 3D view and go filter and cut elements in 3D. We'll just click this one and it brings up the same options just here. So we'll go back into our 2D, just pressing F2. From here, we'll just deselect, we'll hit escape twice, and then we'll go to our zone tool just over here. Now that we've changed all those settings, we can just do everything much quicker and easier there now. So let's get the area for our bedroom just here. We click the bottom left all the way up to the top right just here, and then we'll click in the middle of the room. We've now got our zone. Now, if we hit escape twice, just to deselect the tool, from here, we're going to select on the edge of the zone. We'll click again on the edge, and this will bring up the pet palette. Inside of here, we'll want to go to add to polygon. And this is going to allow us to draw in that extra little area here. Now, if it's making you draw node by node, my preference is to do it in this geometry method just here. And then that way we can just fill it in much quicker and easier. We'll click to that top corner just there. And then that's going to automatically update the area of the room as well. Now, if we go into our 3D view, we can now see our zone inside of the bedroom. Now, another thing about the zones, if we scroll across in this top bar just here, using our middle mouse button to scroll, right all the way across, we'll find this just here, which is the surface. We can then select any surface we want for the zone. We could change this to something, say, like a pale blue and have that as more of a solid fill. Now, we want to be able to put this information into a table that can also automatically update as well. This can seem a little bit daunting, but it's actually pretty easy once you've set it up once. So over on this right hand side in the navigator. Now, if you don't have the navigator, just go up to window and then we'll go to palettes and then we'll go to navigator. And from here, we can just click it and snap it into that right hand side just there. Now we want to create the schedule. So down in schedules just here, if we right click and go to new schedule, we're going to call this one area schedule and we'll click OK. This looks a little bit daunting, but again, once you become familiar with it, it's actually a really powerful tool. So the first thing we want to do is for element type, we want to go element type is, and then we want to change this point just here to zone. So this means the schedule will only pick up things that are a zone. Now, let me just pull this one over to here. So next up, we want to add information that we actually want shown in the table. So from here, we can go to add field, and in the search, we'll go to zone name and we can double click and that's going to add that to our table. Now, if we want, we can just go OK. And if we click on that little down arrow and we go down to area schedule, if we double click on this one just here, we'll now be able to see our table crumpled there at the moment. So what we can do, if we go up to this little point just here and we'll see our cursor change, if we double click this point here, it's actually going to resize it automatically to the size of the text. 
I actually learned this trick from a viewer from the channel who left a comment below. Very cool trick. Thank you very much. Now we've got more information that we want to add to this table. So we'll go to scheme settings, might have to click it twice and we'll add another field into our table. Now, instead of searching, we can actually just go down to zone and we can click on this little arrow here and it's going to show us a big list of all the different things that we can actually show for our zones. So the next one we'll want to click is measured area. We double click on this one, then we click out and then we go, okay. We'll now see that we've got measured area inside of the table. We'll double click this point just here again. Now this table, if we say delete the zone just here, so it's going to automatically remove the zone that we just deleted. So we've now got the room name as well as the area. But if we want to show the color in a cool little isometric like this, all we need to do is go to our scheme settings again. We'll go to add fields. And now in search, if we type in 3D and in general parameters, if we click on 3D axonometric, let me just drag this one over to here. And then we click OK. This is where we've got that cool little isometric. Now again, let's double click on this left hand side just here so that it fits to the actual table size. And we'll double click this one just here. We'll call this one color. We'll delete 3D. We can change the names of these fields up top just by clicking inside of them. So we can call this one area and we can call this one room. Now we can actually adjust the orientation of the table itself just by clicking on this point just up here. So we can flip it on its side if we prefer like a little side profile. Now, if we double click, it's going to resize it. Now, if we wanna change all of the row heights, we can just go into here and then go 15, hit enter, maybe even 20, hit enter. And then, yep, that can change our size. And we can then manually go in and adjust it accordingly afterwards, as well as adjusting the actual style of our text as well. So if we want to say something like a bar low medium, click enter. And we can also center the text as well. Now, each time we add in a new zone, so if we go to the zone tool and then go into our bathroom, we'll add one just in through here. We'll click once, we'll hit escape, go to the edge, we'll hold in shift and we'll tap tab until we can select our zone. We'll right click, we'll go to display order, we'll bring that to the front and we're going to scroll across and we're going to do cover fill for this one and then we're going to go to 50% and then we're going to change this pen color to transparent just so we can see through that as well. Now we've currently got this one shown as bedroom. So that means that in our area schedule, it's also going to show up as bedroom as well. And it's gonna be hard to delineate between those two. So we'll go back to our floor plan. So what we wanna do, we'll want to change this one to bathroom, we'll hit enter. We'll also want to go into our 3D. We'll select our zone. And so that it shows up as a different color in the table as well. We'll go to the surface just here and we're going to change this to a different color. Let's say a translucent yellow. Let's go to our area schedule. And just with those two little changes, we can now easily delineate between the two different rooms. If you wanna be able to confidently draw plans like this, including floor plans, elevations, a section and a side plan, the Drafting Fundamentals course is now available. Short structured lessons with all the project files included so you can learn the core four drawings as fast as possible. Link will be down in the description. So go on and check it out.